السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ایوری منتھ آف اسلامک کیلنڈر ہیز اٹس اون پرٹیکولر تھیمس اینڈ وی آر پاسنگ تھرو دی سیزن آف حج آلدو انفارچونیٹلی دی انٹرنیشنل اینڈ گلوبل مسلم کمیونٹی ول ناٹ بی ایبل ٹو ٹیک پارٹ ان دا حج دس ایئر لائک انفارچونیٹلی لاسٹ ایئر ہاؤ It will be performed by the local um, Saudi residents uh, to the tune of about 60,000. Uh, and compare that figure with the 3 million plus that would normally be there. However, that does not mean Hajj season isn't there. Hajj season is alive. This is Hajj season. And we have to remember for the majority of us, Hajj is, of course, a very important spiritual exercise. Uh, and those three million Muslims who go and do the Hajj represent the 1.7 billion Muslims. We too are partners in Hajj. Whether we are physically there or not, we still should be in a state of Hajj. What does that mean? And that is, inshallah, what I hope to be talking about in the next uh, few of our Friday sermons. But to begin with, and to give you some context to what is Hajj? What is the significance of this visitation? Hajj lit literally means actually to intend to visit a p place. To v it's an intention. Well, you know, like going on a holiday, really. And a holiday is actually a holy day. Not just a holiday. It's actually what used to be the holy days. Holy days means muqaddas ayyam, you know, days of spiritual significance, okay? It's a sad thing nowadays, holiday now is totally the opposite, okay? It is completely about ayashi, about wahayat, uh, about the beaches, and about the clubs. That's what sadly it has, yet it was actually supposed to be days when people went on holy pilgrimages. They would go to holy places okay, to, to recharge their spiritual batteries. I hope you can see what a, what a, 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 a topsy-turvy world we live in now. Eh? Things have been changed around. Okay? You know, the, the Quran talks about this. The roof is on the floor. The floor is the roof. Okay? <laughs> black is white and white is black. Okay? The male is female and the female is a male. That is the world that we live in. That is the madness of our society today, to be honest. And I'm just giving you an example of how holy things, muqaddas, the pilgrimage, have been changed into now totally the opposite of it. May Allah protect us from that madness that you know, we live in. May Allah give us those spiritual insights once more. Yeah, Hajj is an amazing the most spiritual exercise that a believer can perform, really. I want to give you the context to it and its origins. When did it begin and how did it start? What are those rituals of it? And the person who actually is always associated with Hajj is who? Which Prophet? Ibrahim, alayhi salam. And the Prophet, sallallahu was so proud that he said, we are millate Ibrahimi. We are the nation of Abraham. We are the people of the religion of Abraham. Okay? Islam is the religion of? Abraham, alayhi uh, salam. Okay? And I've quoted you a uh, few verses from Surah an nahl the, the last part of Surah an nahl And Surah an nahl the B, is also called the Surah of Gifts as well. B, of course, is an amazing gift. The farmers have estimated that in the UK alone, if there weren't bees, they would have to spend something like four billion pounds to pollinate their plants. That is how much it would cost them, okay, at least. And even then they would not get the crops they get with the bees, okay? I hope you can see what a great gift that is for the farmer, if not for all of us, because we depend on the farmer's uh, foods. Anyway, so Anahal is about the gifts of Allah. 18 gifts I counted were mentioned in that surah. But, and right at the end, Allah talks about 
somebody who is truly appreciative and thankful of those gifts. And who is that? Ibrahim alayhi salam. And here I've quoted you, Inna Ibrahim kana ummatan qanitan lillahi hanifa. Nine qualities of Ibrahim are mentioned in one breath. Subhanallah. I hope you can see, you know, how Allah appreciates, you know. Uh, you know, somebody said about me that, you know, it's like trying to get blood out of a stone to get me to praise somebody, okay? And a lot of us, exactly the same. You know, we rarely praise people. We, re we rarely thank people. Seriously. We are so... But look at the Lord, the creator of universe, eh? The master of the universe. What does he do? He praises his servant Ibrahim and gives him nine glowing attributes and qualities in one single breath. Subhanallah. <laughs> you know, not once, not two qualities, not three tributes, but nine in all. Uh, you know, I've been very colorful this time. If, if you look at that, I've put them in colors for you, just to make it simple, okay? Can you count those nine colors, boys there? Can you count? Eh? Yes, I just wanted to make it easy. So you can't take a look. Dr. Sahib, you have made 90. They're there, right, right in colorful, red, yellow, purple, all sorts of colors. Subhanallah, you know, this is amazing. I'm going to take you through those because I think it's really important. You know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises someone, then there is something very special about that person. Eh? And so Allah says, Inna Ibrahim kana ummatan. Ibrahim was an ummat. You know, we normally understand ummat to be what? A jamaat, a group. In fact, a whole nation. We call the Muslims ummah. We call the Muslims what? Ummah. Yeah, ummah. Yeah, this is the ummah. This is the nation having billions and billions of people in it. Okay? Yet, you know, Ibrahim is Ummah. What does that mean? Okay, it's really interesting. And some people, some of them, Fasirin say, well, Ummah is actually from Imam, okay, the leader. So Ibrahim is the Imam. However, Ummah is really, if you look at it literally, which is that Ibrahim was actually a personification of all the group. You know, what a group has, the qualities that a group has was in one man, Ibrahim alayhi salam, okay? So qualities that were in hundreds and thousands of people, different qualities, they were all combined in one person. And that is Ibrahim alayhi salam, okay? That is one understanding which is really amazing and I think it makes a lot of sense. And um, um, in, in Tafsir Madarik, Imam Nasfi, he, he quotes this um, couplet to prove his point. He says, look, Yes, you know, Ibra Ibrahim was the personification of all amazing, beautiful qualities of humanity. And he quotes this uh, couplet where he says, Laysa alallahi mustankir, Laysa alallahi mustankir, ay yajma al alam fi wahidin. It's not impossible for Allah to combine in one man the whole of the world. Now you might say, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, the modern scientists talk about something called the dark matter. The? Dark matter. Subhanallah. You know, they say that, you know, this dark matter is everywhere in the universe. Okay? And what that means is, you know, the, uh, and, and the black holes as well. They say that, you know, this, this dark matter, the sun is about thousand times bigger than our earth. And it's mean kitni badi executive and daza hai? Big, isn't it? Eh? Very big. E azar ont ika suraj vich. And the uh, astrophysicists believe that the sun, if it was to turn into the dark matter, how big would it be? They say the size of a golf ball. Oh, yes, See how this is mind boggling. This is impossible that such a big thing can roll into. Subhanallah. You know, this is, there's a lot of research going on this black holes and the dark matter. It's amazing. And you know, so when we speak about the soul, you know, the medics can't find the soul anywhere. 
They can't detect it with their MRIs, with their X-rays, with all their gadgets. They can't detect them. And they can't detect the dark matter either. So how do they know it? Well, they say because of the deflections of the electromagnetic waves, there must be something there. We don't know what it is. It has a gravitational effect. We just don't know what it is. But there must be something of this nature which has such a high density, you can't even think. You know, the example is that it closes the sky. Eh? Allahu Akbar. You know, this is what Allah does. You know, kuzhe de vich hai? Im sirf masal nahi hai, it's the reality. And this is what Imam Naswi says. He says, Laysa ala Allahi al mustankir. Okay? It's not impossible for Allah to a yajma al alam fi wahidin. Ik admi de vich puri jahan ki baade. Eh? Subhanallah. You know? So Allah says, Inna Ibrahim kana ummatan. He was a nation in himself. He was the great Imam. I've translated this as a, what is it, exemplary leader. I've translated it as an exemplary, and that also is in some of the, the Fasir Jai, no? And what else is it? You know, he was qanitan, very obedient, carried out the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, qanitan, lillahi hanifan. Hanif means who has turned away from material things, from the world, from the dunya, from the idols from the boots and all those things, okay, who turns away from them towards Allah, he's called a Hanif, okay. Ibrahim was the role model for that. And what else is he? He is Shakiran, grateful, thankful, subhanAllah. What was he? Thankful. And, you know, the, uh, in, in Tafsir and Madarik, I'm studying that very deeply. I think this is my sixth or seventh time I'm studying this amazing Tafsir. And my idea is to actually abridge it and publish it, inshallah, in the future as a translation. So here, you know, he, he says that, you know, Ibrahim never had meal without having a guest with him. <laughs> he would always wait until there was a guest. Yes, you know, he was a rich man. He, he had a lot of land, okay, and he had lots of servants. And so he would never have meal by himself. He would wait. One day, a group came, a group of people came. These are really angels, okay? But in the form of human beings. But not just ordinary human beings, but in the form of lepers. People with leprosy. And when you see a leper, what, what do you normally do? You run away. <laughs> That's normal. Eh? But Ibrahim says, welcome. This is what I've been waiting for. Eh? And you have come, you will have, you know, meal with me. Because I'm going to thank Allah that He has given me afia. He protected me from what you have. Hey? Subhanallah. This was shakir ali anurmihi. He was always grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ijtabahu. He was chosen one. Okay? Mustafa. That's also a selected one. So he was chosen. And next he was muhtadi. He was the guided one. Okay? And then... Allah says we gave him the best in the world and the best in the yes you know he prayed ya Allah make me amongst those who are righteous and Allah said yes we will give you that and finally again you know the Quran goes back to this idea that you know O Muhammad sallallahu follow you follow the way of Ibrahim, the Hanif. Again, you know, and, and, and I, ho I hope you can see this circular nature of this passage as well. It began with Ibrahim being exemplary leader. Ends with what? You follow him. You know, this is the beauty of the Quran. And you know, and you can't see the beauty of Allah's words. What can you do? Eh? We need to say, afsos, sariya aklam for, eh? We haven't got the basic intelligence to understand the beauty and the power of Allah's book and to appreciate it. So do please, you know, reflect on what has been said. So inshallah, you know, Ibrahim alayhi salam is Ibrahim, Imamul Muwahideen. What was he? The, the leader of all the Muwahideen. Okay? We love him. And of course, this already shows you, you know, we are not people who are sectarian or racist or believe in any particular race as having any superiority. 
There is no superiority from the descent you have, okay? The superiority is on those qualities, you know, the Quran says. So, you know, it makes it very clear because, you know, the, the Jews used to claim, you know, we are the children of Abraham. And the Quran is saying, so what? <laughs> so what? Do you have these qualities of Ibrahim? Eh? If you don't, you deserve no special status. Nobody has a special status because of their descent, because of their nasal. The superiority comes because of your qualities. He is Abu al-Anbiya, you know, the father of all the prophets. And he is, you know, Allah says, Ittakhazallahu Ibrahima Khalila. Allah took him as one of his beloved darling, one of his friends. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand, you know, this amazing story. You know, in my Friday Reflections, I've talked about Ibrahim alayhi salam. And I mentioned the 10 main <coughs> passages. Although he's mentioned 73 times. How many times? Count Karevig if you don't believe me. I hope you will, okay? <laughs> in the Quran. But there are 10 big passages where, Ibra like this one, okay? Where Ibrahim's qualities, Ibrahim's incidences and stories are mentioned. And each one of them is amazing. Inshallah, I'll be taking you through those in our next few Fridays. But I hope you yourselves will also reflect on these. Wa akhiru da'wana. And Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.